Hi, my name is Jonathan Hopp. This is the Sunday Go Lessons channel, and I'm going to talk today about the last Kujia uh, versus AlphaGo match. And AlphaGo swept Kujia three games, and I, you know everyone was really expecting it. This didn't have the same sort of festival feel that the match with East Sejal had because uh, AlphaGo was new. It had beaten Fang Hui, but it hadn't really beaten a really strong pro. But now AlphaGo has so many, you know, it's beaten so many top professionals. It's done so many new things. It's like, yeah, Kujie probably lost, but Kujie put up a, a valiant effort. I want to kind of, for anyone who doesn't really play Go, I want you to understand Kujie does actually really earn the title of the world's best player. Um, that he has definitely earned, and these games were play, were top notch. It's just AlphaGo is just too strong. All right, let's get into the game. The game. All right, so uh, Black played here. We didn't see the three four point three three point um, combination. So like AlphaGo likes to change it up a bit. Uh, this approach is a little bit weird. Uh, this approach here at uh, the top is more normal, but there's absolutely nothing really wrong with this move. And then white plays here, and then black plays on the side. And black never plays the common move, which is to slide under. Uh, this move is basically the first standard sequence you learn as a Go player. Like white slides here, and black slides under to grab territory. And Alpha goes just like, no, why would you do that? Um, and I, what I think, personally, the reason is, is that this slide gets rid of possible moves later. So, one thing in Go you never want to do is, you never want to, like, commit yourself until you're ready to commit yourself. So, you want to leave all your options open. Maybe, you know, maybe Black wants to invade the corner. Maybe Black wants to attach here. Maybe Black wants to play the shoulder hit uh, at this spot. You know, maybe Black wants to even pincer at this point, um, which is a rare move, but sometimes happens. And so since you have all these options, once you play this, a lot of those options are pretty much gone. You still have the 3-3 three, three point, and you still have pincers, so it opens up new options. But maybe black, you know, there's no reason to rush over here. This is uh, the micro Chinese, uh, kind of. Uh, this move puts makes it very difficult for white to come in here. Uh, it threatens to make a very big area. It also threatens to develop the right side, so white invaded. This is very normal. And this is a normal move, black attacks. Uh, this, if white wants to play here, might end up being, this is a much more solid sort of shape, but it would be very, like, small. I guess white wanted to play more active. If white goes too far, then black will immediately invade. Um, and then black, white, black, white will not be able to kill, uh, these black stones off because they can connect under here or here. He has, like, two places to connect out, A or B. Um, so that's not possible. So white played here. Uh, this move was a little bit surprising, but actually it made sense. Uh, it's basically daring white to block here. Then white might jump, and then black gets to develop on the top and on the bottom without white gaining. White gains this really teeny tiny narrow area. Maybe even black can keep up the attack. So white, uh, one of the big things in Go is if you locally don't have a good move. Like let's say you're just you're thinking to yourself like, hmm, I don't really like this. I don't really like directly invading the corner because that really wrecks my group over here. I don't like just straight up um, moving this way. Maybe if I don't have any good move, why don't I just play in another spot? And I'm going to wait to see what happens in the other spot before I decide what move to make on the other side. It's a perfectly reasonable strategy. So why attacks a black stone? This is normal. And black plays here. This is a very big point because uh, black shape over here has a number of different open points. Uh, where white can invade and live. So black wants to make it so that if he has, now black basically is saying, if I get one more move in the lower right, this is all territory. That would be basically an, uh, uh, unable for you to come in and live. White plays here. Um, I think Chang, uh, Chang Hao was talking more about uh, the jump here. Uh, because essentially what ends up happening is, once black is strong on the left, these white stones uh, start to become really weak. So normally, when we have weak stones, we jump into the center, we don't uh, try to make a, a base on the side, because there's not enough space here for white to live. This is too narrow. But white wants to attack this black group, right? So this black group here is heavy. It doesn't have eye space, so it must jump out into the center. Uh, the two-space jump is great. This uh, jump is possible, but really slow. And white will play something like this to keep the pressure on black stones, and then it will make the corner really big, and black won't have any sort of forcing moves. Whereas here, if white plays elsewhere, black can do the shoulder hit, like in the game. And now, like, white can, if white plays submissively, black can just jump ahead of white and start to develop the center. Uh, this move I wasn't expecting. 
Uh, Redmond uh, wasn't expecting this either, but if this is a shape move. What this does is it threatens, again, Go is, I like, um, I remember reading Janice Kim's book, so she said Go is a lot like poker. So you gotta think about, you know, your, your opponent has like a threat, what are they threatening? If you don't do anything, let's say you play somewhere else, then White can do all sorts of stuff. White can play the 3-3 three, three point, White could connect easily on the outside like this. There's lots of things White can do. So this move uh, is, I guess, what Kuchia thought was his best option. Kuchia is going to try to use... Like, his, the, the strategy used in the first game and the strategy used in the second game and kind of fuse them together. The strategy of the first game was take lots of territory at the very beginning and hold on to it for dear life. And in game two, it was create confusion and chaos across the board. Leave everything vague and unsettled until the very end when you can try to grab victory. In this case, it's a little bit of both. So he's going to try to make everything live, and he's also going to try to make it so that it's not really quite sure what's going on with White and Black's groups. Um, that way he can try to seize a chance. So Black Tanuki, they're, they're really, this move doesn't actually necessarily have to be answered directly. Uh, if you want to answer directly, I guess you would play something like this if you wanted to protect the corner. But there's no like urgency to, to uh, directly attack this move. So Black strengthens his left side group because he figures if he strengthens the left side, these two stones at the bottom for White will become weaker. This is all normal. Uh, this breaks through. I guess Black uh, does not like. Let's say Black were to answer here. I guess Black does not want White to play a move where White gets to develop the left side. Now Black is. This group does not have any influence on in this area. So this is actually a very big move. White plays here, and this was another surprising move. Some uh, Black's got to watch his shape here. Uh, he's got a Knight's move, which could be cut. The Knight's move have these, has these two weaknesses. Uh, so the, what, the nice group move could be cut, and that would be very, very bad for black. So this move, uh, some people were thinking this, which uh, we can go like this and try to press white down. But honestly, this is a very solid move. I have no problem with this. Now, later, white can, you know, play a move like this. And let's see. Black plays this, white plays this. And then essentially, yeah, you could do like this. This might even be something, because then when black plays here, this week is this white group, so I don't think white's going to go for that. So black plays here. Yeah, white might pull back a bit. This might be actually halfway decent. Um, Let's see, white plays here. Yeah, actually, no, I'm sorry. White will just uh, simply connect like this. But then we get this sort of stuff. That's, that's okay for black. White was able to get in the corner, and this group is strong. Let's go back a bit. So black played here, and now there's there's no um, weakness here between the, the black groups, which means that these two white stones are really weak because the left side is very strong. So when you when you have a weak group that doesn't have enough two eyes, and you're surrounded by really strong groups, it could be it, like life really sucks. Uh, white there is some like bad potential if white cuts. Um, this would end up killing those stones on the bottom, but maybe these stones over on the side later. I'm not talking about now, but later. White could maybe cover them. But it all depends on whether or not the O2 group can survive, because the O2 group will also be surrounded. So it depends. It might be some bad potential there. Uh, white plays this, which is a new move. Uh, we've seen it recently where we just uh, attach to this stone. Right? And then black extends. White covers. This is a big move. Uh, black, this is very urgent for Black. Black really wants to try to settle this shape. Um, these two stones actually see it like normally most people would try to just defend them. Like, uh, this all sorts of stuff you could do. You could defend them like this and try to keep this group floating. Um, but Black, AlphaGo really likes solidity. AlphaGo likes when its groups are very, very solid. So I kind of feel in this game that it, it that's sort of diffusing Kujia's strategy. Kujia wants uh, things to be vague and uncertain and this or that until the very end, whereas Alpha goes like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give you a target. Okay, White presses down. And this is for the corner. This is a very big move. R16 looks slow, but it's actually very big. And what really got me was this, this group at A... Even though, like, most Go players would feel terrible about giving up uh, this group because it gives the whole right side, and the right side is in no means small, this group ends up being a headache for White. Um, it, he has to, like, spend a few moves to kill it. 
it gives um, uh, white, black some sente moves later, it, it really becomes a nuisance. So letting it die is actually not so big for black. Black plays this. This is a very big move. Uh, some people may think it's a little bit slow, but it weakens this group here at uh, K3. I'll mark it. This group at A. And now this invasion at uh, B, the 3-3 three, three point, is very severe. This white, if this white group does not have two eyes, it is, if it loses its corner territory, it can become a floating group. And black has already prepared a wall on the outside, so white will get very weak. White played here, which is a shape move, but I'm not so sure about this move myself. It looks good, um, but then black finds a great counter by just invading the 3-3 three, three point. White plays here and has to cut. Uh, it's... You don't want to hunt. Most people probably just hunt it here. If you hunt it here, it's not a good exchange because now black is a lot stronger. Um, this is not a cutting point anymore. So when you try to do something on the left side, like let like now that black okay, follow my reasoning. Now that black has taken the three three point, you can't kill this stone. This section here is no longer territory. Your eye space has to come from this very narrow area. You need to sometimes to live. You have to extend your eye space by one or two points. And if you can do that in Sente, you can come back and live. If black is strong here, you won't have uh, really good Sente moves to try to uh, sort of get your opponent to respond to you to get the extra little little point. Okay, so white plays here. Okay, and black plays a very solid move. Now, the only really option here is this or this, uh, which could say decides that he wants to um, block here first and then play here. Uh, it's very urgent to block. Otherwise, if you don't, if you decide not to block or take the big point, then Black's gonna play something like this, and this is really painful. So, cause you blocks, I believe you can't do this, cause then White White will do this, and that's really bad. Um, you yeah, that's really terrible. Second. Da, da, da. That, that that doesn't work. So, but you would go here, and if black plays here, you could just that's real. This looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Why? And then you have this problem over here. You have this problem over here that looks really bad. Okay, so I can't Hane there. I'm sorry, black. I'm sorry, black can't Hane there. Um, white connects. Is here has to defend. Black is basically alive here, and now the only real weakness Black has is this cut at A, uh, which is fairly severe. Uh, but this white group is really low on liberties here. The white group at B is very low on liberties, so I don't really feel Black feels that he's being very much pressured. Uh, Black comes out, Hane, here, uh, and I think White doesn't really want to continue here because there's kind of a squeeze. And this is this looks really ugly. Uh, this does nothing but damage the lower group because this group is really this group is like really dying, and this cut becomes like meaningless because this group is already out and you're not really attacking it, so that cut doesn't like matter right now. So that looks like a really bad variation. Uh, white comes here, and it's like this is a like this is where AlphaGo is really cool because AlphaGo is basically saying, listen. I could play the much stronger move of like this, where now white white M1 is not Sente. But I really would like to be able to connect th this group on the right to the group on the left in case of an emergency. It's like that um, break in case of emergency glass. Uh, it, this does allow white M1 to become Sente, which could which could give white an eye. So remember I was talking earlier about those Sente moves on the first line to give you that eye or the extra bit of space? This is one of those examples. White connects. And this white group is really not doing so well. So black always has an, an option to just escape. Like, I, you know, you don't really want to do this now because this group, this move doesn't give you any points. And it doesn't scoop out your opponent's territory. It just connects. But it's there in case you need it. This move is surprisingly big. Uh, I was looking at, like, at a move like up top because it lo looks like the top is pretty big. But then you know, black has like really awful moves like this. And he may even start something like this, and this looks really bad. All right, so black plays here, and you see how these like stones on the right that they're they're dead, but they're still working. This is kind of the magic of go. Like those stones, as long as they're on the board, they're doing something. So white reinforces the right side of the board, 
and black is going to go for these stones, and white's going to let him take them. White uh, pushes here because he wants some some option of this cutting and this pushing and stuff, but I think he's pretty much playing for these stones to die. Okay, and black gets the biggest point at the top. It's really sad white couldn't get Sente to play um, something like this. This would have been a really big move for white, um, but I just he just did not get Sente to play it. Now black gets it. Um, it would be kind of pathetic sad um, if, like, this is the normal way you play when the other side is extremely strong, right? So when the lower side is strong and you're afraid that you're going to get scooped out and be attacked, then you play like this. Like, if, if white played like this, then this 3-3 three, three point is very much open. If the territory inside is gone, white is dying. So that's not a good move. So you have to play something like this, but it's very slow. Defensive moves and go are very, by definition, slow. So you try to avoid them. White played here. Okay, and then this is the first time we've ever seen AlphaGo play this, this slide under. It was, you know, it was a, it, I want to kind of put this, you know, in the picture frame on my wall. I've never, you know, AlphaGo just doesn't do this. But it makes sense in this case. Uh, because now you get this combination where the top side is looking really huge. And with these white stones pretty much dead, um, you know, it's not going to bring them out. These white stones are dead. That means black is very strong here. Black is strong here. The corner is open, but black is a strong shape, and so this is looking really big. So, Kunji had played amazing after this point. I really was impressed because if I were playing white, I would have given up by now because I would say well, my group here is not even alive. I barely made any points here. I'm going to probably lose more points here. I don't know how the heck I'm going to get to the upper side, but Kunji finds a way. So, that's very big. And white kind of finds all of the... White puts, like... Please, what you do in these kind of situations, when you have to go into your opponent's large territory, you need helper stones. Like, you need them bad, because you're going to be outnumbered. So what you do is, before you invade, you pepper the area with forcing moves, so that maybe they'll be ladder breakers, or maybe they'll let you connect and get an extra liberty. They might, they might just die. They might just outright die, but they have to be useful in some way. So you do that right before your opponent makes a big territory, so that when you invade, you have some help. So white invades, like white must invade. This If the top side becomes black's territory, the game is over. And so white starts a really spirited uh, sabaki, all right? Sabaki is when what you skillful play in an area where you're outnumbered. Uh, I guess this is a bad move. I guess, like, normally you would play here as a shape, but maybe... Yeah, maybe this, this Hane uh, has something bad with it. Let's see... Yeah, this honey might not be so great. Uh, for Let's see, yeah, because you have to go here and then this. Yeah, that would suck. All right, so to go back, black plays this to avoid that, which is cool. Uh, this is just all forcing moves, and then black elects not to save these two stones because they're not that important. Instead, we're going to try to take over the whole top side. And then we get the squeeze, and then black has succeeded, and white has reduced about as much as he could the top side. Honestly, though, white I don't, white got some forcing moves. Like, you may think, well, you know, Jonathan, white died. These three white stones died. These three white stones are dying. But consider the fact that before all this stuff happened, before all, all of this mess happened, this is what it looked like. You shouldn't expect to be able to go that deep in here. You should expect to have to sacrifice something and get the outside. And getting the outside will help its center group. So that's pretty much what you can realistically expect if your opponent is not just going to hand territory to you. All right, we go back to here. Uh, this is a big move. Uh, black defends, and black needs to defend. Other otherwise, like if black decides he wants to take a big point, then white plays this, and this sucks. You are cut. <laughs> this black stone here dies. These black stones here die. Okay, black defends, white plays here, and, you know, black's not going to worry, like, white can later, um, do stuff like this, and cut and try to turn that to the center into some sort of territory, but I think white also wants to be able to play something like this later, so he's not in a rush to do anything there. Uh, black plays here, and now black is connected out, his stones are safe, his escape hatch worked, this is huge, and this move... 
This move, this move, I love this move. This move is amazing. So, it's very difficult um, for White to have to deal with that because that means that he has to spend some moves to kill. Spending moves to kill a group that's already dead loses you points. And you don't, it's called semi-dore, you don't want that. So we make White live, and then Black plays here. I think White, White doesn't really want to do a co. If White does a co, um, what you have to look at for co's is you have to look at like the win loss situation. If you win, then white looks like this and white gets a few points and maybe white uh, can connect under for a few extra points. Okay, that's cool. But what if black wins? Like what if black gets to take the co? Then these stones die and you lost a huge amount of points on the right side. So this co, if white starts to co like this, the co is much more dangerous for white than it is for black. So therefore we don't do it. Black plays here, white gets a sente move, white lives, and even though it looks like the game is close, like it's the game is probably within half a point to maybe one and a half points, a lot of people who are not familiar with Go, they, they say, okay, well, you know, it's such that Kuchia only lost by a half point in the first game. It the, It's not the difference in points that determines the difference in strength, it's the, whether or not the, your, your opponent can overcome you. Like, Kujie can't overcome it, you know what I'm saying? He can't get, he can't uh, find enough points on the board. He can't find a move to do it. So it doesn't matter if it's a half point or six points. If you can't bring the, you know, push the balance to your side with your moves, um, it's sort of like, I always think of Go as arm wrestling, right? And so, like, you know, you're try you're, you start off in the middle, you're balanced, and you're trying to end the game, not just where you slam your point down, but where you, at least you've got your hand over the halfway mark, more so than your opponent. And so basically, Alpha Bogo has got Kujie's hand over the halfway mark and does not, like, allow Kujie to push forward no matter how hard Kujie, Kujie pushes. So let's continue. White captures the two stones. Black plays here. And I think if we had just continued the end game out normally at this point, it would have been, like, like a half point to one point. This was surprising. Um, this is Sente. These white stones... These white stones never got solid the whole game. It's, you know, they always had bad Aji. So, if white takes, then they're fine. Like, these stones are fine now. But what was surprising, what shocked me, I think was, um, I think Haji and um, uh, Stephanie In were both uh, commenting, and they were both shocked by this, because this, if, you know, black can escape, and so if black escapes, then these cutting stones all live, and white is dying. Like, white doesn't, has one eye in here, at the most. There is even with two moves, it might be difficult to make a second eye. So white captures uh, three stones, which is big. Saving these stones is big, but losing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen stones, twenty-eight points just in stones lost, plus the points surrounding them. There is no way to win. And essentially, we're just waiting for uh, White to resign. I mean, yeah, exactly, White to resign. Uh, because essentially, he if he connects, you push, Atari, cut, it, 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 it's dead. And that's why it was so shocking, because it was just sort of like, why? Like, I know Kujie knows that he has to do something over here. He has to, like, take uh, so that his stones don't get cut. Kujie knows that, but Kujie maybe is seeing, he can read out to the very end. Uh, professionals, once they get to a certain point, they can read out the optimal end game. And so I know Kujie can read out the optimal end game, and he probably sees himself losing by a point or a, or a half point, and is trying something. Like, when you're losing in Go, and you're at that point where it just doesn't look like you can do anymore, you try something. And it, with human players, it might work. The fog of war, the chaos of war, might you know, you might be able to pull something out. With a computer who's utterly rational and is just, you know, just analyzing the situation, He's just going to basically say, you want to take those stones? I will kill everything else. Just purely rational. All right, so in this game, it, this wasn't, like, there wasn't any, like, spectacular moves, like in the Isado game where Black played a fifth-line shoulder hit, or in the second game where Black uh, played sort of this um, uh, iron pillar in the center. But there were lots of sort of subtly strong moves in this game, where uh, black maintains solidity, like the first of which was, for me, was this. This move, this move is perfect in its simplicity. 
it keeps black strong, it makes it so that this group is solid no matter what, and the more solid this group is, and the more solid this left group is, the weaker these middle stones become. And the weakness of these middle stones was never fully resolved until the end of the game. Like, that was that was what's, what's so amazing. Like, the, the, the choices made in the beginning of this game resonated, they carried throughout the rest of the game. So, the other moves, um, the AlphaGo play that I found were, um, really moving or touching, or why I feel like I've learned a little bit. Come a little bit later, let's go forward a bit. So, AlphaGo handles all this spectacularly. It's just the, the correct moves. And here, it kind of feels like it's wrapping things up. And then, uh, of course, when AlphaGo finally plays the slide, I was, I was, you know, I really was thinking AlphaGo might do something like this directly. But AlphaGo played the slide, I'm like, yes, this is, okay, fine. The slide is now a move if the other side is really, really strong. Um, other than that, AlphaGo played methodically, solidly, and Kutia really, really went for it, right? This is a complicated game from White's perspective. Um, he probably had to read a lot of the sequences. There was a, there was a lot of fighting and tactics that were going on that were completely below the surface, and Kujia probably gave it his all. I know he was trying really hard. I'm sure Kujia actually has become a stronger player um, after this three-game match. But um, as Nye Weiping, uh, Nye Weiping's a professional Chinese Go player, very famous in the 80s, he uh, gave an interview after the match for one of the, for the Chinese English language um, network, and he basically was saying that uh, AlphaGo might be 20 Don by now. The AlphaGo is, is, even though the point difference is small, that's not actually really the difference between AlphaGo and the top players uh, of the world, that AlphaGo has gone into another, like, another area. His, his metaphor was, we're riding bicycles, and they're up in spaceships and airplanes. AlphaGo is up in a spaceship or an airplane, and there's no, re there's nothing, there's no reason for us to race a bicycle versus an airplane, we already know the result. So for me, what I really look forward to is going over De uh, Deep Mind has given us a treasure trove of AlphaGo versus AlphaGo games, where AlphaGo plays itself, and those games are really far out. Uh, Shi Yue, which is uh, a Chinese pro, got I guess they gave uh, some pros a look at it before they officially released them, and the uh, Shi Yue was uh, was um, uh, quoted as saying it's like go from a hundred years from now. Like what will like what advances will that be? So I'm sure everyone is has their eyes glued. I know as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to look at them. Uh, this is a great, um, this is great. I like to thank uh, Michael Redman, Hajin E. Hajin, uh, Stephanie Ian, uh, Andrew Jackson, all the people who put this together, Demis Asavis, everyone who was able to do this, because this was, this is what I really wanted. This was the uh, three-game match and events that were for Go players, um, for us to kind of use AlphaGo to help us to enhance our learning, to enjoy the game more, and to try out new stuff. So I like to thank all of you guys again. This was a really great week for me. I have gotten little to no sleep, but I'm got a big smile on my face for it. All right, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.